Over on BBC Two in just over ten minutes' time, Pamela Armstrong will be talking to journalist Gerald Priestland. There's music from Alan Price, and she investigates illusion. Here on One in just over five minutes, Children's BBC with Philip Schofield. That's after some cartoon fun. Boy, oh boy, what a breakfast that is gonna make, Pally. Golly, boss, we don't have a frying pan that big. We'll think of something, little fella. Don't worry. My, you don't go an egg. Opening up. You might as well give up, Chief. That's a tough egg to crack. You could say that again, Pally. And then some again, Amara. Shoo. Extra, extra, sea monster egg from Scotland sinks into the ocean. Extra, extra. Boy, am I ever popped, Pally. You mean poop? That too. Don't look now, catfish. But we're having an ocean quake. It's not an ocean quake, Chief. The egg is cracking. Boy, what are the... Ugly little chicken thing that is. It sure doesn't look like a chicken to me, Chief. Well, whatever it is, it must have had an ugly mother. Mama. Well, wait, wait a minute, kid. Get lost. Shoo. Scat. Go to school. Mama. Now, hold it, boss. The little guy thinks you are his mother. Not on your life. Or even on my life. Get away, kid. You bother me. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Let's get out of here, catfish. Mama, Mama. I don't think you can shake him, Chief. Oh, no? Well, we'll just see about that. I'll show that little tiger longer. He'll never find me here. Mama. Oh, oh, oh shoot. <laughs> you, you little beast, go home to your ugly mother. Mama. Let's face it, boss. It's no use. <laughs> oh, no? Eat my bubble, kiddo. <laughs> I did it. Catfish, I got rid of the little pest. I lost at him. Shoo! I'm famished. I'm starved. And I'm also hungry. What do we got to eat, Catfish? Mama! We got any peplum? Warm milk? Ground spinach? Look at that, Catfish. We may have a professional basketball player on our hands. He's doing great, Chief. Well, if he's going to be a son of mine, he's going to be tops and athletics. He's going to be a, a, a pop and play, a, a lip up, a pop up. Athletics, Chief? No, sports. <laughs> Watch it, fella. That's no way to treat your mother. Mama, Mama. Mama. Did, did, did you see, see, see that cat, catfish? I sure did, Chief. You've been feeding him too much. Maybe he's got gas. Oh, no, boss. He's just growing up. But, but so fast? Mama. Mama. He did it again. It must be a family trait, boss. That does That does it. The kid's got to go. I got news for you, kid. I'm not your mama. Now get lost. Mama. He's done it. He's done it. He's driven us out of our house and home. Boy, is he big. Mama, mama, mama. Come on, Catfish. He's bigger than both of us. Mama. We got you. A shark. A sea monster. Just so he don't step on us. Mama. Go away. Shoo. I'm not your mother. I'm a total stranger. I don't even know who I am myself. Follow me, Chief. I think I know where we can get rid of that kid. I'm with you, Pally. Just make it snippity snippity. He's gaining on us. Boss, Loch Ness, Scotland. Big deal. This is no time to dilly dally, Pally. Here comes trouble. Mama, mama. Oh, 
Come, do something, Pally. Do something. I won't have to, Chief. Look over there. <laughs> The Loch Ness Monster's baby. We won't be bothered by it anymore. I told you I'd take care of things, didn't I, boys? I fixed things up, huh? You sure did, you bumbling dumb cup, you. Golly, what's the matter, boss? Now, what good is Muddle's Day gonna be? No presents, no greeting card. Yeah. You sure fix things up. Well, well, take it easy, Chief. I'll send you a card. It won't be the same. I'll get you a present. It won't be the same. What if I make you a cake? It won't be the same. <laughs> what if I bit you on the nose? Then you would get some well, same well, out I'll of it. Well, I'll sit on your lap for a while. How about that, boy? Keep I'll me away from big eggs. How about that? Right, let's get these curtains open. Right. And me? <laughs> what do you think of the curtains? They're brilliant, they are. We'll have to find some other use for those. We'll put the milk out behind them or something like that. You all right? Good. Got a great afternoon lined up for you. Also, chart day today. We'll show you the charts. That's coming up. And there's also Jimbo and the Jet Set in a moment. I've got all sorts of bits and paper here that tell me what's on. Ha, ha, ha. It's called Quiet, Please. But you must be quiet. You can make a noise of watching the telly if you like. And at 4 o'clock, there's the Chuckle Hounds, followed at 5 past 4 by Captain Caveman, which today is called the Old Caveman of the Sea. Sea, sea noises? <laughs> That's followed at 4.15 by Johnny Briggs. <laughs> and then after that, at 4.30, more of the longest and shortest and fattest and slimmest in record breakers. We've got news round at 5 o'clock, and that's followed at 5 past 5 by Grainshill. But we'll crawl our way back to the top of the list for Jimbo. <laughs> Chief had just received a report from head office on airport noise. He was not in a good mood. Hello, everybody. Can I have your attention, please? The Noise Abatement Society have been on to me again about the noise coming from this airport. What's he on about, Tommy? I can't hear him over all this noise. Hello, Chief. Would you mind repeating that? We can't hear you. It's too noisy. I know! That's exactly what I'm on about. We've got to cut the noise down. Well, he's in this making all the noise, if you ask me, Tommy. Yes, he'll have those noise abatement people on to us again. Hello, London. This is a flagship calling. Permission to land, please. Tommy Tow Truck, tow Jimbo down to the workshop. The chief engineer wants to quieten his engines. Permission granted, flagship. Come in on runway four. Come on, Jimbo, let's disappear before the flagship arrives. Talk about quieting my engines. Just listen to that. Shh, mustn't say a word against our flagship, Jimbo. Hello, Chief Control Room, London Airport. Can I speak to the Chief Controller, please? This is he. Oh, good. I live at the bottom of runway four. I wish to complain about the aircraft noise in my garden. Oh, dear. I'm afraid our flagship has just landed. She is a very large aeroplane. Oh, no, no. I'm not complaining about that beautiful big plane. It's that little one who keeps flying around in circles. You mean Jimbo? Uh, I mean, uh, one of our lighter aircraft. Uh, I can assure you, madam, that we are seeing to his engines at this very precise moment. Hey, Chief, this engineer of yours, he's putty. Look what he's done to my engines. They're sticking out like sore thumbs. You'll have to put up with it, Jimbo. He's got people complaining. Now, Jimbo, I want, I want you to, you take, to take off, off on, on runway four, four and, fly and fly around the airport. airport. Quiet, Quiet as you, you can, can, please. Ooh, the things I have to do to keep everybody happy. Oh, 
Oh, it's you again. I thought you said that little plane had had its engines quietened. I can assure you it's carrying specialized anti-noise equipment. I will turn my listening device up full. Oh, you must be listening to the wrong plane. Listen to this. Yeah! But that's terrible. Leave it to me, my dear. You'll have to come in again, Jimbo. More engine mufflers. Oh, no, not again, Chief. I can hardly hear myself think I'm so muffled, Chief. Just you get airborne. I'm not having little old ladies phoning me up and complaining about my aircraft. Up you go. You're at it again, aren't you? That little plane is making a terrible racket. Jimbo, are you listening to me, Jimbo? I'm listening, Chief. It's so quiet up here, I can hear the birds flapping their wings up and down. They'll flap you up and down. You haven't taken your engine wraps off, have you? No, I haven't, Chief. Honest. Strange. What's she on about, then? I'm going down to see that little old lady. I am the Chief Controller of the airport, madam. These are my credentials. Now, uh, <clears throat> this noise... It's out there, right now. It's that spotty-faced kid with his model aeroplane making all that noise. Not my airport, not my aeroplanes. Jimbo, don't stand there like a steaming pudding. Get rid of that bundle of rags and get yourself ready to take this nice little old lady for a trip around the airport. What did you say, Chief? I can't hear a word you're saying for all this airport noise. Jimbo! <laughs> Bandaged? No, I never think you make too much noise, Jimbo. Now, of course, we're coming fairly close to Christmas, and the Chuckle Hounds today is called Chimney Capers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Now, I was going to say it was all clean for Father Christmas to come down, but they made a mess of that, didn't they? Goodness me. Right, OK, we're going off to the bottom of the sea now. KV has to protect the teen angels from a shark. Captain Caveman! It's fun and adventure with the teen angels and the world's first superhero. Captain Caveman Show. Zowie! Miami Beach! What a superific place to spend our vacation! Right! Nothing but sun, surf, and sand. And best of all, not a single mystery in sight. Most of me love him first. Oh, uh, most wild beast got kid. Hello. Oh, uh, me save you. <laughs> so you like busting little kids' toys, do you? <laughs> Get him! Oh, boy. Me got him! Me got him! Uh, him got me. understand it. A few moments ago, we were about to bring up a million dollars worth of gold and jewels. Then the shark scares away my divers, and when they return, the treasure it is vanished. Perhaps we can be of some assistance. There is nothing you can do. The treasure is gone. Zowie, he sure is a strange one. Oh, come on, I'm a meat catch shark. That is no shark. That is Pierre, the howl cleaner. Yeah. What a fool, me. Come on, Teen Angels. We've got another unsolved mystery on our hands. Right. How about we check out the dock area for clues? <laughs> There's no sign of anything around here. Not even a suspicious-looking sardine. Let's try the other end of the dock. Come on. Oh, there, lassies. Come to buy some fish? No, thanks. We're searching for clues to the disappearance of Jacques Lafarge's treasure. It vanished just after that shark scared us off the beach. Yeah, funny thing about that shark. I never heard of one coming this close to the beach in these parts. Hmm, that is strange. Oh, just my luck. Then I have to be here. Speaking of here, where's KV? Attention all pilots, prepare to launch jets on practice run. <laughs> oh, we love ping pong. Oops! 
Second Squadron, prepare to launch. There's no sign of KVA anywhere. Yeah. They'll probably drop in on us when we least expect it. A perfect landing. With this rented boat and scuba equipment, we can search the area where the treasure was stolen. But, but what about the shark? Don't worry. Cave will protect us. <laughs> oh, swell. According to Jacques, this is where the treasure was. Let's go! Scuba dooby doo! Sally! The ship must be 300 years old! I don't think finding a million dollar treasure is worth it. Come on, let's check it out! Gummy drops! <laughs> of the stolen treasure. Yeah, they didn't leave a thing. Oh, yes, they did. Those peculiar gouge marks are brand new. We found what we came for. Let's go. Yikes! It's the shark! Do something, KB! Me save you, Captain K! something about these termites. <laughs> and me got you now. <laughs> it looks like the shark got away from you again, KB. Unga mom, not all of him. Uh, me got shark whiskers. But sharks don't have whiskers. That's right. This is the tip of a radio antenna. And it's the final piece of our puzzle. Now I know how the treasure was stolen. Golly! And I know the perfect way to catch those crooks red-handed. Come on, not again. And that's the plan, Captain LaForge. I will do anything to get my treasure back. This is the captain speaking. We have discovered another treasure and are heading to sea immediately. Good luck. Another easy steal. Captain! Hey, it's a trap! Let's get out of here! I'll stop you. Uh-oh. Yeah, petrified fish! Fix you! when the old sailor at the dock told us he'd never seen a shark so close to shore. Later, Katie came up with a radio antenna, and we realized that the shark was mechanical and remote controlled. But it was the gouges beside the treasure chest that was the weird clue. 
until we realized that the shark made them when the crooks used him to fuck up the treasure. But, but where is the treasure? Right where the pirates left it. The perfect hiding place. Look, there's Katie. Well, uh, we make friends with mechanical shark. Yeah. Baby, that's not the mechanical shark. It's a real one. Oh, no. Okay, well, finishes so fast. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, Johnny Briggs now. Albert has created havoc again with the wiring in the Briggs house and in school the clay models are ready. smaller as well. Yes, well, you see, different types and colours of clay change when they've been fired. I wish mine would come out red. Well, if we'd started with a dark brown clay, it probably would have come out red, Nadine. Or if we'd used uh, a grey clay, it probably would have come out a creamy biscuit sort of a shade. How, Rhys? Well, it's just the action of the heat on the clay, Martin. Now, these, partly because they've been fired in sawdust, have come out a charcoal sort of colour. But that doesn't mean to say that we can't paint them if we want with poster paints and then varnish them. Well, how did I smell this food? Well, to begin with, the clay was full of water, wasn't it? Yes. And heat dries things out, doesn't it? Yes. Well, that's what's happened here. The water has evaporated out of the clay, and so, of course, your animals have got smaller. Oh. Please, miss, do you think mine still looks like a duck? Huh. This knows that Arthur's going to want a fountain man's old suitcase. Do you think I should call my squirrel a bear now? What happened to his tail? I don't know. It must have fallen off. Still, it was fun making it. Yeah. I can't work out what when he's done much like. Like the Muppets. Yeah. Peter's frog's good, though. Yeah, it's just like a real one. Oh! Mr. Hobbs is at last. Now that Mr. Hobbs is going to go around the class and pick out the best three models. I think Peter's frog's best. And Mr. Hobbs' decision will be final, Johnny. Ginny and Josie's caterpillars look like something our Razzle's done. They're definitely the worst. Yeah. Oh, Nadine. Tell me about your, um, your offering. <laughs> it's a hedgehog, sir. Looks more like a scrubbing brush. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Pamela. What a lovely bear. And what's that, Johnny Briggs? No, don't tell me. It's, um... <laughs> it's a monster from outer space, sir. <laughs> Very good, Ginny. Well, now, I have decided that the best models, the models that are to be made out of cement and placed permanently on display in the school gardens, are... The toadstool and caterpillars made by Ginny and Josie. Second best is Peter's frog. And third, uh, yes, the hedgehog. I still think it looks like a scrubbing brush. Remember what I said about Mr. Hobbs' decision being final, Johnny. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Hobbs. My pleasure, Miss Broom. <laughs> all right, all right. Now's your chance to have a proper look at each other's models. If you'd like to put them on the table in the centre, please, and then you can gather round and have a look. And be careful you don't knock them off. They're much more fragile now that they've been fired. 
there told you we'd win. <laughs> Look, I can't do better than him. It's too true Johnny Briggs hasn't got a single good idea in his whole head. Is that so? Well, there's one thing I am that you can ever be. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Something really special. I don't believe you. I bet you. What? A million pounds. Well, I'll bet you three apples and six bananas. I'll bet you anything you like. I'll bet you three butterscotches that Johnny's something more special than you could ever be. Go on, then. What? Ginny is trying to make something yeah. up. I am not. Go on, Johnny, tell him. I'm an uncle. Please, Miss Broom. Johnny Briggs says he's an uncle and he can't be, can he? Oh, yes, he can. Any boy can be one and any girl can be an auntie, so there. Well, now, let's see. Most aunties and uncles come about because a brother or sister in the family has become a mother or father. So somebody in your family had a baby, Johnny? Please, miss. My mother knows somebody got married and had three babies at the same time. You could have a baby if you got married, Miss Broom. When are you going to get married, miss? We'll be able to sell confetti in the school yard. If you do, me and Johnny will report you for being little out. Yeah. Well, I think I'd better be going. <laughs> yes, well, thank you very much for all you've done, Mr. Hobbs. Oh, by the way, I've got something for you. Oh! oh. Enough. Now, where was I? Was that his job, Miss Bro? Oh, yes, Martin, it was. Oh, yes, I know, babies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now then, Johnny, has somebody in your family had a baby? Well, well, no, Miss. There. I told you so. But I'm only going to have one, Miss. Well, that's very nice, Johnny. Congratulations. Thank you, Miss. Where's my bananas? <laughs> right, now let's get back to the real subject of gardening. Now, as you all know, Mr. Badger has put Johnny and Martin in charge of the school pond. Go on, Rattle, take it outside. Go on now. He's a good dog. Hey, you can't have that in here. Outside. Go on. Mm. Why aren't you looking in the mirror? Because I'm getting good enough at talking not to have to, Johnny. Oh. Do you think Bruno Belton Alexander will ever move that bike? Who knows? I want the tires for my school garden. Mm. Does your girlfriend play chess? What girlfriend? Mary Gold thing, I mean. Mortimer? Mm. She's not a girlfriend, Johnny. She's a... Well, she's a colleague, really. Like what you have when you work alongside somebody in, say, a bank, for instance. Just because we're both in a debating society doesn't mean anything, you know. Oh, so you won't be getting married then? Good heavens, no. Oh, because then I'd be an uncle twice over, and the twins would never beat that. They already owe me six bananas because I'm married having a baby. And you've then never beat that. Hey, is the electric back on? No. Oh, I want to use my air dryer. And their mum and dad haven't been married 25 years. Hey, on the subject of silver weddings... What? Why don't we throw Mum and Dad a party? A party? Mm. Here? Of course, we'd have to keep it a secret from them. Make it a sort of surprise. How? Well, we could hold it in the cellar. Wouldn't that be a bit dangerous? Why, they never go down there. We could fill the place with food and tinsel. They'd never be any the wiser. No, Rita, I meant our Albert's wiring system. He trapped school. He said that if we all wore a rubber welly all the time, they would be all right. They're good insulation. And then there's his mushrooms. The ones fungus at their party, eh? They only take up one little corner. He's planning to fill the whole place with them. I think I'd like a party. That's settled then. Oh, well. If I can't have them tyres, I'd better look for something else to make a school garden out of. Hadn't I, Humphrey? Mm. I wonder what there is. Hey! I'm using that in my wiring system. It's going to be a sort of lamp. Are you still here? My old dog Mary, she catches you, and she'll never give you another bone again. Now then, let's see what there is, eh? Ah. Now then, that's all. This would be good, eh? I mean, what you could do is, well, you could paint it, 
could put shelves in it and and there'd be room for me on it from them in the corner. Go on, Razzle, outside. Go on now. Go on. Poor old Razzle. The yard's all concrete. Nowhere to bury his bones. It's a good job you've not got your garden planted yet then, Johnny, eh? <laughs> <laughs> 